Hi, I'm Yaka Marie. Today I'd like to talk to you about some tips to improve your presentation when you are entering a costume contest or a masquerade competition. What is masquerade presentation? Well, quite basically, it's the way your costume looks on stage. It is not meant to be a talent show. Talent shows sometimes do happen at conventions, but those are a separate thing. Um, there are some cosplay contests or masquerade competitions where talent shows are acceptable, but in general that is kind of not the way the trend is going right now in the um, competition world. When it comes to stage presentation, it should always be about the costume. The costume is the star of the show. It's great if you can put on a nice little skit, but the costume is the star of the show. One of the first things you are taught when you are in a play or in theater is that you should never turn your back to the audience. When it comes to cosplay competitions, costume competitions, or masquerade competitions, this rule does not apply. You absolutely want to show the whole costume to your judges, to your audience. You want to show the front and the back. You've worked pretty hard on this costume, and you've probably worked pretty darn hard on the back of this costume, so make sure to show it off. So, what makes a good presentation? Well, a good presentation tends to be short. A good rule of thumb to follow is that if you have one to three people in your presentation, your presentation should not be longer than 60 seconds. Now, that sounds really short, doesn't it? Well, if you think that sounds like a really short time, just sit for 60 seconds. Don't do anything, just sit. It is an eternity when you are on stage, and it is an eternity when you are in the audience. So a good presentation tends to be short. Now, a good presentation will also be entertaining. Like I said before, it's not a talent show, but you don't want to bore your audience or your judges if you can help it. Short presentations are good, funny presentations are good, and it's even better if you can do short and funny at the same time. That was something that was taught to me by Pierre Pettinger. I don't know if that's a direct quote from him, but he did say that once, and that has always stuck with me. Try to use pre-recorded dialogue or pre-recorded music if you can. Now this doesn't always work when it comes to certain competitions because certain competitions are not going to have the tech available for you like others will. Um, but if you can, it's always good to use pre-recorded music and pre-recorded dialogue. And the reason for that is because sometimes when you get up on stage, you're really, really nervous and you'll forget what you're saying. That's not a problem if you're recorded dialogue is there because you're not going to forget to say it because it's already there. Uh, the other thing too is that sometimes things go wrong and it's very easy to say things like cuss words uh, that um, are not really acceptable on stage. Most competitions are a PG-13 environment at most. Some are even PG. Avoid live speaking with a microphone. Don't plan on using a microphone if you can help it. Most conventions don't even have this anymore. They don't allow you to do it because there's just too much that can go wrong. You can drop a microphone and those are not cheap. Uh, and a lot of conventions are pretty strapped for cash. So when you're dealing with their um, technical equipment, you really don't want to be damaging anything. But also, as I said before, you can forget your lines. Uh, something could happen, screw up, etc. It's just a really good idea to not plan to do any live speaking or talking with a microphone. You'll be surprised at how easy it is to forget what you're doing on stage. So practicing is a great way to ensure that muscle memory is there. You can have the best skit ever planned and then something will go wrong. <laughs> a couple of my friends have had things like wings break on stage 
always have a backup plan as to what you're going to do. Uh, one of my very first competitions, I had this really cute little presentation that I was going to give with music and everything. And when I went to get on stage, they started to play my music and then something happened with the computer system and it just crashed and there was no music. So I just went on. I just did my skit with no music and I ended up winning Best Novice. So that was a pretty awesome experience. Don't rely on inside jokes or show references if you've done something that's a media recreation. Now, th I say this with a little asterisk because sometimes inside jokes can work when you're at a masquerade like um, at an all genre con. For example, if you're at a Doctor Who con and you want to make a joke about how the TARDIS is bigger on the inside, it's probably going to go over just fine at the Doctor Who convention. It may not go over as well at a convention where the focus is Star Trek, you know? <laughs> so know your audience. It's really important to know your audience when it comes to presentation. A good rule of thumb for if you're worried about somebody isn't going to get your skit or they're not going to think it's funny is to show it to somebody who has no idea what you're doing. Like, your, say your parents have no idea what your fandom is. Show it to your parents and if they laugh, if they get it, you're good. If they don't get it, you might want to reconsider tweaking your presentation a bit. Don't rely on the meme or popular song of the day because you do not know how many other people in the competition are doing the exact same thing. And it can be kind of awkward when you both have the same presentation. As I said before, don't spend too long on stage. You generally want to be on there for about 60 seconds for a one to three person entry. That is another little asterisk because sometimes when you have more people, you're going to need more time. Uh, but if you're going to have more people, you need to make sure that you are constantly changing something around. Like every 10 seconds, something new needs to be happening. Otherwise, it's going to start to get boring to your audience. And like I said before, you don't want to bore your audience. So, and I have judged for multiple competitions, and I always love seeing what people do. Uh, you don't have to have an elaborate skit to have a good presentation. It can, it doesn't have to be anything big. It's funny, it's great when you can do something funny, but even Saturday Night Live writers who do this for their, um, for their living, they're professionals, they don't always get it right. Humor can be difficult to do. Uh, a lot of people do think it's easier, but it's not always. <laughs> Uh, drama is just fine too. Dramatic presentations are awesome. Just make sure you practice them and make sure that you're really getting the impact and the effect that you want with your costume. I have um, also been in multiple masquerades. Um, one of the most recent where we had a big group of um, the Six Wives of Henry VIII and we had done it to a horrible history song. It was very fun and we ended up taking home a pretty major presentation award for that. Um, so yes, I have a lot of experience with this. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I will try to either address them directly with you or through a new video. All right, I'm Yaka Marie. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like this video and I will see you next time. Practice, 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 practice. Even if you're just walking, even if you're just walking, even Okay, I see you want to be part of this video.